Alright, welcome everybody, Dr. Keith here. Happy Friday, May 27th. Hope you're all doing well. Just want to verify, can everybody see my screen okay and hear me okay? We could type in a yes in the chat, that would be great. Thank you, Andrew. Thank you, Arsene. Good to see you. All right, we'll get started in just about a minute. Uh, I am also live streaming this on YouTube as well. And this will be recorded. Everybody getting ready for a long weekend, hopefully. I know I had a few emails. They were surprised I was doing a webinar before a long weekend. People that know me, <laughs> I do like to spend a lot of time with family and friends, but I also wanted to get the talk about the day trading because it's, uh, it's an environment right now that's it's really good, really good timing. Okay. All right. So with that, I now have 12 o'clock Eastern. So again, welcome everybody. Thank you for attending. I, I look forward to spending, I don't know, the next 45 minutes or so with you, uh, give or take. Uh, one of the things that um, most of you know me by is my seasonal trading, but there are times I like to day trade. I don't do it every day, full disclosure, because I do like to spend time away from the computer. But a couple days a week at least during the market, normal hours, um, I do like to do, especially when we have some volatility and the markets are are a lot of fun. and. I do have rule-based trading, so you know the goal here is to kind of show you how I trade over the next 45 minutes, but then also when you look at a chart, you'll be able to say, okay, well, if Dr. Keith was doing this based on his rules, you know, when would he enter, when would he exit, okay, everything will be clear for you, okay? Uh, so again, before we get going here again, re make sure you read the important notice here that bottom line is you should not trade with money you can afford cannot afford to lose. Trading's tough, no question about it. You have to have rules, you have to talk with your financial advisor, you have to have a plan. You know, the problem with most traders is they don't, and so when something goes against them, they just hang on and they blow their account out. Okay, okay so with that, before we get going, um, why don't you let me know how many of you day trade? So if you do, type in a seven. If you don't, type in a zero. So type in a seven if you day trade, type in a zero if you do not day trade. Just out of curiosity on the folks that are on the webinar today. <clears throat> okay, so we've got uh, a couple zeros, a few zeros, but mostly sevens. Tom, love your last name. That's a fantastic last name. <laughs> All right, hey, Bill, good to see you. Patterson, good to see you. Okay, so... So with that, folks, you can see on my screen here, I'm going to have a couple slides, but the bulk of this presentation is going to be live screens. Okay, that's just how I like to do it, especially with, with day, day trading. But uh, what, what you can see here, folks, is, is basically my, my trading system in a nutshell. And I've got a, a few different indicators. One, I, I use Hakanashi candles. Okay, so these are not regular price candles. These are Hakanashi candles, but... You also will know, based off my indicator, what the actual price did. So when you look at a candle like this one right here, okay, this one right here, the white bar is the open of actual price, the red bar is the close. So even though I'm looking at Hakanaji candles, I still know what regular price has done during this time frame, okay? And this happens to be a five-minute chart, but it doesn't matter, okay? The other thing, just so I don't forget to tell you, which I'm sure I won't, but... When you're, when you're looking at day trade, I typically start at the five minute. That is what I like to trade uh, or the one minute. But my indicators and everything else works on any time frame. So a lot of you like to use like 233 ticks, you know, much faster trading or the 53 or, you know, the 30 second or some will do a two minute, one minute, five minute, 15 that's that it doesn't matter um the difference is obviously the, the longer the time frame then your risk is always going to be larger because you have more time with that 
um, but you can also make more money on a particular trade because you can stay into it longer, right? My goal when I'm day trading is very simple. When I get into a trade, which you'll, you'll learn here how I do, when I get into a trade here, okay, I don't have a profit target. And that might be different than many other folks um, where they say, okay, after 10 ticks, I'm getting out. And again, it doesn't mean you can't adjust the system to how you want to do it. But the reason I use Hakanachi, folks, is very simple. Once I get into a trade, I want to try to maximize that. So I don't want to make 10 ticks if, in theory, I could have made 15 or 50, okay? I want to have small losses. I'm going to have some small wins. But then where I really can make my money on day trading is the bigger wins. Same with swing trading, but specifically with day trading, because on a trade like here, if I entered here, my exit is on the red dot, which, again, I'm going to teach you all of this, okay? So, again, depending on your situation and how you normally day traded in the past, you may have took a few ticks and got out. And that's fine. But, and I've learned this from swing trading, when you're right, it's good to maximize your rightness because the market has no mercy, right? So as long as I continue to stay green on the Hakanachi, which then will show me the dots, then that's my entry, okay? Then here's another potential entry right here on the Laguerre, which again, you're going to, I'm going to show you all of this. Right here, it's in the direction of the trend, which is green. So when do I exit the trade? You can see here on the bottom. Oh yeah, right here on this red dot, okay? And so I'm trying to maximize. I usually make about 80% of the entire move. What is unknown, from, and then when I say entire move, I mean from this trigger here to the exit point. What's unknown is the actual amount of the move, right? That's, that's what I use the Hakanachi then to manage the trade. The other goal of mine today isn't really necessary to teach you Hakanachi. Um, I do have previous webinars on Hakanachi. You can go find me on my website and, and, and YouTube. But the reason why uh, I use Hakanachi is it's, it's off of moving averages. It's a little bit more lenient to price movement because my ultimate goal is to maximize those moves, okay? So one more slide for now. I do, Tom, I do, good to see ya. I knew that sounded familiar other than just my last name. <laughs> All right, so, so my rules are simply, for my entries, okay, I want the direction of the trend is preferred, meaning when you saw the green, you know, that's a long play. That's my preference. It doesn't mean I never go against trades of that, but then I usually reduce my size, okay? Then I have the Laguerre RSI trigger, and then I like to stay the Hakanachi color in the direction of the entry, so when they're all aligned, so again, going back to here, in this case, right, we have the trigger, the Hakanachi's green, you got the green trend indicator of mine. Okay, everything's in alignment there. Okay. And then the other entry can be yellow to green or yellow to red to be more aggressive, meaning in many cases during a trend, okay, let's say you get out here at the red dot, right? Well, when all of a sudden you get directly a yellow back to green, but the Laguerre hasn't come all the way down. That's another entry, it's just a little bit more aggressive. But that's okay, especially when you have a very dominant trend. Okay, so that's another way to enter the trade. And then my exit. And again, this, I, I, can't, I can't tell you enough, folks, how important it is when you're trading in general of having a plan. As soon as you get in, you have to have a plan. Right, that's why most traders fail, specifically with day trading as well, is they'll just try to hold on and margin out as much as they can, hoping it comes back, right? Well, my exit are easy. The Hakanachi dot, that's what HA is, in the opposite direction color. Or what I'm going to teach you is the flat top, flat, bat, flat bottom concept with Hakanachi as well, okay? Or if you're in off a of five minute, you can then wait for a sell signal, signal on the smaller time frame. Okay, I do that at times as well. Okay, but again, what I'm talking about here is 
as an exit point, once I get into a trade, let's just call this trigger right here, okay? I don't know how many ticks I'm gonna make because I wanna make as many as I can. But you can see my exit point is when I get that red dot right here, okay? Or anytime I get a flat top opposite color like I did right here, and I mean by flat top, and it might be hard to see in this slide, there's no wick. Okay, that's pretty bearish. So a lot of times what I'll do when I'm day trading, I'll just get out here and save a few ticks beforehand. Either way, you're making money, but that flat top, flat bottom concept, you know, is very, very useful, um, especially um, when you're looking to maximize as many, you know, many pennies as you can on each of these trades, okay? So again, I have specific rules on entering and exiting the markets. Okay, let me bring up my thinkorswim charts. I'm gonna focus on a few, just a few symbols today. Um, just out of curiosity, most of you that day trade, what do you like to day trade? Which symbols? Just so I get a feel for what you all like to trade. Okay, so a lot of the, the higher liquid liquid ones, which makes sense. Okay. Ooh, our Bob Craig. Wow. Okay, no problem. So we'll we'll look at that. Okay. Okay, so these are my think or swim charts. And what I want to do first before I put it all together here, because <clears throat> you're gonna see it's not overly complicated at all. It doesn't have to be. But I'm going to explain each of the indicators just so you, you get a feel for it, okay? <clears throat> so we'll just start here. I'll just start labeling them on the screen. So the, the first one you can see here, and it automatically pops in. This is divergence. And so all that means to me specifically is that when you're in a if you were long here, you know, you'd be out. But as you get a new trigger here, long, all of a sudden you get... A divergence arrow usually the next bar if it's the opposite color I'm out because divergence can be very powerful okay but you can go back and look at your charts in that and it automatically pops in in either direction you know you can have bearish divergence or bullish divergence so I just like to know that because I have found that to be a really good indicator of a potential top or bottom again short-term top or bottom okay so that is included in my package the divergence okay the other one that you don't see quite as much is the gap. This is the first part of it. This is the second part of it, okay? And what this is, is for the S&P, the ES, you know, this works for the Dow, the YM, usually um, the, the NASDAQ, okay? Gaps can work for stocks, but in my opinion, not as effective, but it's still nice to know. So let me explain what the gap is. So the gap, this is the open at 9.30, this bluish bar. And it's telling you this is the open, but the close at the, the regular session the previous day is down here, okay? So this is the gap, meaning this would, it would have to come down to this red line to fill the gap for, for the previous day, okay? Statistics tell you that happens about 80% of the time especially if there's not a pre-market big big uh, move up in the markets, okay? If you have like a 30, 40 point move already pre-session, it's probably never gonna fill it. Um, and I also will tell you in ticks up here on the label what the gap was for the day of ticks, okay? And the reason why that can be familiar or very, very useful is if we would have got at the open here today and it didn't happen today, okay? We would have got a sell trigger and we start coming down. This open can be support now. So if price were to come down, this could bounce right off. Or if it was selling right away, typically it'll come down and test that, that close of the previous day. So these are kind of a couple support levels. And again, this gap fills roughly 80% of the time, folks. That's pretty incredible. So I just like to know what the gap is. Now this was what I call more of a breakaway gap, 104 ticks pre pre market. So I'm not looking for it to to fill the gap, 
But if we get another decline going into the afternoon session, I could certainly see this, you know, coming back and at least feeling the open of the 930 today. Okay. But these are just a couple good support resistance. And a lot of times on smaller gaps, it'll fill pretty quickly. Okay. So you can use that as a play as well. Okay. So, so we have divergence and we have the gap. Okay, that's a couple of my indicators on there. Okay, now we have the Hakanachi candles, right? And so the Hakanachi is standard on Thinkorswim, right? This is all for Thinkorswim folks. Um, but what I've what I've included was these open close bars, so that you can tell during an open of a bar, the white is the open, the red is the close. So it's a green bar. Okay, but what did the actual price do? You can see that. Now you can change all these colors and settings. Those of you that are colorblind or just like different colors, that's all. That's all as an input. Uh, you can do that. Okay. <clears throat> but anyway, so we've got the Hakanachi candles. You've got the trend right here. In this case, it's green, so that's my bias especially when the channel's widening. So if the channel's gonna to continue to widen here, when I get another trigger long, right, that would be a good opportunity. So the last trigger we had today on the S&P was right here, what, 11, 12 or so, right here, okay? And it's meeting all the criteria. You've got the Laguerre trigger, green Hakanachi, and remember these flat bottoms are very powerful, and that started off a nice little, nice little move up from, what, from right here to to right here at this point. And you know, we're getting towards lunch hour, right? And so I'm expecting a slowdown. So when you start getting these very weak candles, you know, you can always go then to a like a one minute chart and exit on any signal of, of weakness because again, I don't usually trade right about now until about three o'clock again. Okay. It uh, doesn't mean you can't have movement, but from usually twelve to three, two thirty, three o'clock, the markets kind of are boring in most cases, okay? But that was a good last trigger there. So, so that is the Hakanachi with the trend indicator of mine, okay? You've got the tick label. I also put it down here, just so you can see. Uh, the gap and the ticks is totally separate, so this is the gap. Now, the tick count, this is kind of a cool little thing this is telling you really big picture folks, the buying and the selling here. So right now it's saying, and this will change all the time. Okay, right now it's showing like the, 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 the dollar sign tick is minus 38 and that's for like the Dow. The NASDAQ is minus 192. If it's rotating between plus 500 and minus 500, not really that significant. But when you start getting a plus 1,000, that means a lot of buying's coming in, or minus 1,000, okay? And so if I'm getting in an uptrend and I get a trigger, and all of a sudden I see, oh, the tick count is plus 1,100, okay, that means there's a lot of buying coming in on that move, okay? So I like to know what the ticks are doing, okay? Then on the bottom here, the oscillator, the white dotted line is the Laguerre oscillators. Like any other oscillator, it goes up and down. My favorite trades are when the Laguerre triggers, comes into the green and then back out for a long play, or if it's up at the top and it comes out of the red for a short play, okay? Those are my two favorite trigger points. In this case, my bias is to the upside, so I would ignore the short, right? Make sense? If this was a red cloud, then I would look for the short. You know? Now, it doesn't mean you can't take this trade. But I'm just telling you my preference is to wait to go back with the trend. Okay? So I just wait for that oscillator. And by the way, part of the package as well today is it tells me on any instrument you want to put in there when you get that five minute trigger. See where it says short? It was telling me Apple had a five minute short. Gold had a five minute short. That way, if you want to trade multiple things, you can keep your watch list to see when something is triggering from the Laguerre perspective, okay? Then 
if you get the trigger, the only other thing I'm waiting on, I want to make sure Hakanachi agrees. So in this case, as soon as you have that green Hakanachi candle, that is my trigger point. Okay? So like, well, that's not hard. You're right. So again, look at this trigger right here. This is pre-market, 8 o'clock, 8.15 or whatever. So if you enter the market here, I wait for a red dot to exit. Oh, here's the red dot. Here's my exit. So here's my, here's my profit. Okay? Or if I get a flat red, flat top here, this happened to be the exit point, but if it was a, the first bar was a flat top, usually I'm going to exit a bar early then just because flat tops are very bearish, flat bottoms are very bullish. Okay? Hakanachi is super powerful, folks. You just know, you have to know how to read it, which again is not difficult at all. And then really the last indicator on here, which you don't usually have to worry about if you're trading something regular market hours though, is the, the ADX here. And I just color coded it very simply that if it's green or yellow, then it's trending enough for me to, to look to day trade. If, it's, if it was a bunch of red, which sometimes you'll get after hours and so forth, then what it means is, it doesn't mean short. Red just means that you could be ranging, and we all know how hard it is, right? We all know how hard it is to make money in a ranging market. So the ADX doesn't tell you which direction. All I look for is if it's green or yellow, then I'm okay to, to make my trades, okay? Ken says, are the red and green bars, I think you're talking about these bars, Ken, those are Hakanachi candles. I just had programmed the open and close of actual price. Yep. Okay. And then, so with these dots, all these dots are, again, I like to look at things visually when I'm trading. So if you entered this trade here, a more aggressive trade here is because, remember the Laguerre didn't come into the green and come back out? You see that? So when it goes from red, yellow, back to green, that's another entry, okay? A little bit more aggressive entry, okay? But then, as long as it stays green, I'm staying into that trade. And then I get a yellow dot because it's the first red candle. And then the second red candle, if it paints, will be the red dot. That's my exit point, okay? So I just like the dots. It helps me then go back and visualize trades as well when I'm back testing and stuff, okay? Okay, let's see here. Just going to look at some of these questions. Um, uh, this is for Thinkorswim. I'm not sure on Ninja. Okay. The bars at the bottom, Ken, let's see. So Ken says, let's see, I'm looking. Oh, so I just combined this. So the Hakanachi dots are with the Laguerre. You can actually separate these two and have them different indicators. I just, I'm just condensing the screen. I like it this way. And then it shows me that, hey, when I get a trigger on the Laguerre, what color is the dot, right? And as long as it's yellow or green, then, then that's a good move for me. Yep. Okay. Yes, so the dots are represent the color of the Hakanachi bars, except the yellow, right, because there's not yellow Hakanachi bars, means potential trend change because... The, the first bar has just changed. But I like two bars for an actual trend change, which would then create a red dot. Yep. Yep. But bottom line is, as long as you're long, as long as it stays green, I'm staying in the trade. Why? Because I want to try to maximize a win. Okay, I don't want to just grab 20 ticks if I could have made 100. Okay, we don't know going into it, that's all, right? Okay. Good. 
Gotcha. Okay. So good. All right. So yeah. So we'll take a look at. Let's look at some exam more examples here. So some of you said QQQ. Let's take a look at QQQ. And we'll kind of walk through it here. Okay. And so again, I'm defaulting everything, folks, to a five minute time frame. You can do it any time frame you want. It's going to look the same, just different time frames, right? So if you want to be faster, you can go to a one minute. If you want to be longer, you can go to a 15. It doesn't matter. I'm just, I'm showing you how I, five is how I typically go in. Now, when you have a really strong trend, if you miss the, the entry, okay, sometimes I will then go to a one minute and take a one minute. Okay. But generally speaking, I'm going to keep it simple today for the teaching, from teaching standpoint. Okay. So here's the cues. All right. So here's the 930 open right here. We happen to get a trigger on the Laguerre right at 935 ish. You got a yellow dot or green dot, right? So let's say right here, the open is your entry. You can see how easy it is to manage, right? Going into this trade right here. Okay. If it turns around against you and you get a red dot, you exit the trade. Okay, in this case, it didn't. The exit is on the red dot right here. So this was the profit. Okay, but look at all of these flat bottoms. There was no reason to say, hey, look at these three wicks, it's time to get out. Okay, have confidence in Hakanachi, right? It's going to give you 80% usually of the entire move using this in combination with the Laguerre, okay? So that's what we want to do because remember, we're not going to win every trade. We're going to have some small losses. We're going to have some small wins. You may have an entire day of this, right? But it, there's going to be days and you get some of these big wins and that's how you grow your account, right? Just if it goes against you and you get a red dot, get out, get out, right? There's no reason to feel pain, significant pain anyway, right? And then you can see the other, remember the overall direction is green. The next trigger was right here. So we almost had a Laguerre here, but you see how the Hakanachi stayed red? So then you wanna enter right here. Again, flat bottom, very solid play. But now we're going into lunchtime. By the way, we have divergence, you exit right here. So I would be out of that with that divergence trade right here, okay? See how simple that is though, as far as understanding, right? Yes, and but yes, we've had the ADX has been green all morning. So we're good there as well, okay? I know, it's not that difficult. <laughs> but remember the real power is in just using the Laguerre in combination with the Hakanachi and then knowing the trend, right? Knowing the trend. Like, like I'm not shorting this right now. We're getting a Laguerre trigger. I'm not shorting this. I'm not interested at all. One is because it's at lunch. It's 1227. Okay. But why go against this trend? I'll wait for it to retrace and then come back higher. Okay. And if it doesn't, that's okay. I'll look for something else. Okay. Okay, yeah, no, just for think or swim today is this thing for toss, yep. Okay, and so let's see what else. Um, I think giving examples is the best way to, to go here. Apple, all right, let's look at a stock. So here's today's price action. We had a pre-market trigger at eight o'clock on Apple, right here. And then if you entered, you got a red dot at 9.15. Okay, so that was a decent little profit. But then if you wanted to get right back in off a more aggressive play, you see how you had the Laguerre curve, then the green dot, the green dot is your entry. Oh, and by the way, flat bottom, love it, love it. Okay, so if you took it, when would I have exited the trade? La, 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 right here, right here, okay? So again, you're, you're grabbing the bulk of the move. I'm ignoring the short play. Let me clean this up for just a second. I'm ignoring the short 
Okay, not that it can't work out, but I'm ignoring that. And then we got another long play, 11, 15, right here. Okay? Right here. And by the way, you had divergence. Next bar, you get out. Okay? Another nice win there on Apple. Okay? So, yeah. So, if you like shorter time frames, again, it's the same process. Let's go to the one day, one minute. So, now we're looking at a one minute chart. Let me blow this up just a tad. So now you can see your one minute. And again, so if you get a trigger, right here is a good one. Back to green, you just wait for that one minute to close at a red. Okay? All time frames work. You can go to a 15 minute, same thing. Okay, you're, you're following the exact same rules. My sweet spot, what I have enjoyed, is the five minute chart. That's why I'm putting it and focusing on the five minute today. And then when you get an aggressive trend and you're having a hard time re entering, I then change it to a one minute when you have a strong trend. Okay? Okay, excellent. And again, keep bringing in the questions. I'll, I'll definitely address them all here. Want to make sure I answer any questions. Yet. Yeah, we can look at bonds. Sure. So this is a five minute on bonds. Let me move it over to today. So you can see right here, around six o'clock, I don't really trade in the middle of the night, maybe you do. <laughs> uh, but you had, a, you had a trigger here, which again, you can see where you would have exited. And now here's a good example I wanna share with you. So right at nine o'clock, you had a Laguerre trigger, you've got green Hakanachi, but you see how the trend indicator, I call it the cloud, but it has nothing to do with Ikamuku. You see how it's red though, but it's narrowing. Okay, so that is a trade that I would be willing to take. What I don't want to do is take a trade, like I wouldn't take a long play now when this cloud, red cloud is widening. Does that make sense? Okay, so, so that one's fine. Again, because I know if I'm wrong, I'm going to get out on a red dot. In this case, it happened to be right here. Okay, right here. Now you've got the red cloud, so the, the entry now is right here, because now you've got the red cloud as your bias and direction. And so as you can see live as we're, we're going through this, you would still be in this trade, right? We'd still be in this trade. But the rules are simple. That's the goal. I'm not guaranteeing you anything. The rules are simple, though. Look at that again. Flat top, flat top, flat top, channel widening, you know? what 141 maybe we, we will see we don't know where it's going to come down to but we know when we would exit right we would either exit on a flat bottom green candle a green dot or divergence you're just waiting at this point okay okay yep okay Sure, let's take a look at Tesla. <clears throat> so Tesla today, here's the 930 open right here. You had a Laguerre heading back up, then you had a green dot again. Okay, that's your buy. And then when do you exit? Right here at the red dot, okay? Right here. Or, Ah, we had divergence, so the next bar is your exit right here. Divergence is amazing, folks. Absolutely amazing. Okay. But again, where I find this is a little bit different than most day trading systems out there is they usually tell you what your profit target is. But I don't want to. I don't want to limit myself because what we don't know is how far something can move. But what we have learned. 
right? What we have learned is that markets can trend for a long time. Let's take advantage of that. And then if it goes against you, the rules are simple. You'll get out when you get the opposite color dot. Yeah, we can look at the SPY. That's going to look a lot like the S&P. So with the SPY, same thing, right? Look at the beautiful one around 11.15 or so. You had the 8 o'clock with the nice move. You had the re-entry. Again, it looks a lot like the SPY, doesn't it? I mean, like the S&P, ES, right? Excellent. Yeah, I like trading Microsoft as well if I'm day trading stocks. Most of my day trading happens to be futures because that's just what I do, but it doesn't matter. So with Microsoft, you had a pre-trigger right here at 920-ish, then you had your green dot. But again, where this is helpful, folks, is going into this, we have no idea what's going to happen, right? But then all of a sudden, you got flat bottom, flat bottom, flat bottom, flat bottom. So instead of taking profit right here at these wicks, flat bottom, flat bottom, you have to follow the rules. Red dot, here's your exit point, okay? It helps you determine when it's your exit point. And that's where most people fail is they don't know how to get out of a trade, especially the losers, right? You hold on to it. You can't think of the losers as a losing trade per se. It's a losing trade, but what it is is if you have losing trades, it means you have a trading system, right? Because you remember, my goal is small losses. You'll get some small wins, but then you'll get some of these bigger wins, okay? Okay. All right, so let me bring up back the PowerPoints here. <clears throat> So again, this works on any time frame, folks. Uh, you know, I, I show you mainly the five minute because that's how I like to day trade. Okay, I have specific rules of entering and exiting as I've shown you. And again, my goal is to have always big wins, but we know that won't happen. So I want to have small losses. You'll also get small wins, but then you'll get some of those big, big wins, okay? So this package today that I'm showing you, everything I just showed you, it has the divergence, the gap, the Hakanachi that has the open and close of regular price, the ticks, my trend indicator, which I call the cloud, the Hakanachi dots, the Laguerre, and the ADX, and also that five minute Laguerre trigger. So let me talk about that again. And what that is, again, I'm just gonna expand this, show you, is. Like if we bring up crude oil, you see how it's saying short right now? Right here, it says short. The reason why it's showing short is because the Laguerre is triggering short, right? That way, if you're looking to trade multiple things, now am I taking that short? No. Why is that? Because we have a green, solid green cloud, right? But that was a nice long play on crude, wasn't it? Look at that. You know, from 113.91 all the way up to 115, that's a lot of a lot of coin, isn't it? Anyway, so that will include that trigger as well. And you can put anything you want. So you can put something in like Microsoft. If I can type right, maybe I can't type today, but there's Microsoft, and if it'll say neutral until it meets that criteria. Okay. Uh, Laguerre, LRSI is just the it's a Laguerre oscillator. It's just like a it's any type of oscillator. I just like the Laguerre because it's, it's to me, the best one out there. It has a, the least amount of false signals. And what I like about the Laguerre is it allows me to get into the trade and then I use Hakanachi to manage that opportunity. Okay? All right, so what I'm going to offer you today, folks, and I'm going to put this in, in the chat. You should see it in the chat. 
kind of a Memorial Day special. I haven't really done this publicly yet, but I'm going to give it to you for $9.99 um, for the next, for today, basically. You can see there, okay? And the reason I'm doing it is, you know, my goal is in this environment to give people really good tools to make money. Many of you don't want to hold on to longer term positions right now. Um, so if you go to, again, uh, I think I can bring up my website too and show you, let's see. So if you go to seasonaltraderpro.com, okay, so www.seasonaltraderpro.com, or again, I put the link uh, in the chat for you. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll address that in a minute. Um, and then if you just go to product, if you don't click on the link I sent you, but if you click on product and services, it'll be right here day trading okay so then when you click on the day trading it brings it up to where we're at okay but the, the, the link is also in the chat and so one nice comment was I like it it's not too busy looking and absolutely it doesn't have to be busy looking okay and a lot of times I'll even hide the ADX just because normal trading hours you usually have enough a trend direction okay but it doesn't take up much space so I keep it you know but yeah, I try to keep things pretty simple because the real goal is managing the trade, okay? And when you continue to get these flat bottom green Hakanachis, folks, there's no reason to exit that trade yet, okay? Then we have that beautiful divergence right here. So the next bar you're out, happen to hit new recent highs, and then it's coming back a little bit, okay? Okay. Anything else you want to look at? Any other questions? Yeah, so seasonaltraderpro.com, and you can see the link here. I also put it in the chat, um, but you can also just go to Seasonal Trader Pro like I showed you, and you'll find that as well for those of you that are on YouTube. This is being recorded and will be sent out. If you have questions, you, here's how you can get a hold of me. This is my email. This is my cell phone. If you want to go to the YouTube channel, I'll, I'll put uh, the YouTube channel in the, the chat as well. So you have the YouTube in there. Yes, Dean, it's just for toss, just for think or swim. Yep. So how do I exit? Okay, good point. So let me let me talk about that while people are asking questions. So so let's say I'll go back to Apple. So all of a sudden we had divergence here. So the next bar I get out, okay? I actually use the active trader on think or swim right here. And then I'll just get out at the price. Okay, I don't really like to like sell market because then you get more slippage, but I'll go right to the price and just get out. There's a lot of ways of doing it, but you know, I want to try to keep that, you know, the most profit I can get. I don't want to get as much slippage if I don't have to. Okay. Good question. Yeah, so typically what I'm doing is when I have when I have the S P open here, again, this is just my paper trade to show you here today. Right. If you're in a trade, you know, I, I like to then just keep my active trader open here like this. That way, if I want to enter, I just go right to where I want it. So let's say, you know, we had a new trigger right here. I would just go right to the current price and go in. OK, you know, let's say you want to do two contracts. OK, then when it's a sell, I would just go over here to the red and get out at wherever that price was at. That's how I like to do it. Yep. Yeah, I can put that in there again. So the link in the chat. Uh, yep, absolutely. And, and again, you know, if you have questions, text me, call me. Um, but the key here is, folks, is that I'm not going to keep this offer for long. It'll definitely be going back to $14.99 and then eventually 20, back to $24.99. But I want to do it for a Memorial Day special. I want to get as many people in, involved in Hakanachi and day trading as I can. That's one of my goals over the next several months. So you'll be seeing some more webinars with me as well, but this will be the last of this 999 offer.
All right, well, I don't see any more. Oh, wait, one more question here. Do I look at higher time frame? Not really. So what I mean by that is if if the day, if the five minute is working and trending, okay, I don't need to go to a bigger time frame. It looks great from a marketing perspective. It really does. Okay, but when you're day trading, you're getting in and out of certain prices. It's not all that helpful. What I care about is the time frame I'm looking. The only the only deviation from that is very simple. If if like we have a very good uptrend on the S and P right now, right? So if it stays like this, and I can't get in around three o'clock this afternoon again because it just keeps going higher, I'll look at a one minute, right? So I'm going into smaller time frame to get in quicker, right? But but no, I I just mainly look at the time frame I'm looking at. Yep. Okay. Now I, I have found Thinkorswim Geo just just much better from a charting perspective than than Ninja or e, e Signal. So at this point, I don't have any plans in developing it for that. You know, you can open up a Thinkorswim account for like fifty bucks and just use the charting for free. They give you free data feeds, and then you can still use your broker. So. If you really like it and you want to try it, um, you know, you can open up an account for basically free. And again, you get live data. Okay. So there's really no reason not to. You can use the charting for Thinkorswim. Most people then just convert over though, because again, it's a very, very good platform. Yep. All right, folks. Well, again, I told you about 45 minutes. I appreciate everybody's time. Please reach out if you have questions. Other than that, I will send the recording here uh, so you can review that um, as well. And, and I wish you all the best, folks. But, but either way, again, hope you have a great, great long weekend, and we'll talk soon. Take care now.